Okay then. First of all then what we've got to do is draw a Venn diagram for the 300 patients and look at the substances that can be in the blood A, B and C. So to do this what I'd want to do is draw some kind of border around three overlapping shapes. I've chosen a rectangle with three circles here but you could have any shapes you like. Let's mark in the three substances A, B and C and we should be able to go down through the table now because there are 100 patients then that have only substance C in their blood so only substance C is going to be this region in here okay so we'll mark in 100 for that one and then we've got a and C but not B. A hundred patients have substance A and C but not B. Well A and C would be these two regions here but we're talking about the region that's not in B so it's got to be just this region here. So there's a hundred patients for that one. Okay let's just tick these off as we go down. Okay. Now what about this one? Only A. 30 well only A has got to be just this region in here so that's got to be 30. B and C but not A. B and C would be these two regions but not A just reduces it down to this region here and that's 25 then. Okay. Only B is 12 so that's got to be that region there. A, B and C 10 that's got to be in the middle all three and then finally A and B but not C A and B is that one but not C so it's just this region here and that's three I say finally thinking that maybe we're done but we're not well I say we're not always check out if your total of your values comes to what you've got here 300 well if you were to total all these numbers individually you don't get 300 you get 280 so that's going to mean that there's 20 that are left over that don't have the substances A, B and C in their blood so we need to put that 20 there. Okay well that's the first part then now we'll just move on to the other parts so for part B we've got to work out the probability of someone having the substance C in their blood. So what I'd want to do here is just write P of just simply C. Probability of C. So how many patients have C in their blood? Not C only but they can have other substances as long as they've got C in the blood. Well that's going to be the 100, the 10, the 25 and the 100. So if you were to write these down, okay we've got 100 plus 100 plus 10 plus 25. That's the number of patients then that have blood, sorry, that have substance C in their blood out of, so we'll put that over 300. And if you work that out, what you find you get is 235 out of 300. And this reduces down to 47 out of 60. And I'd leave it like that because exact values generally are much better in probability if you can give them. Okay, well that's part B. Now for part C, okay, let's just draw a line down through here. For part C, we've got to work out the probability, knowing that this person has the substance A in their blood, we're given that, what's the probability they've got all three? So this would be written as the probability of having all three substances A and B and C given that we know that that person has substance A in their blood. Now when you're dealing with Venn diagrams it's so easy to do questions like this because we know that the person has substance A in their blood, so that's out of A, okay? And if you were to 
look at how many people there are in this set, just add them up, 100, 30, 10 and 3, you'd end up with 143. So 143 people have substance A in their blood. But of these, how many have all three? Okay, A and B and C. Well, it's 10. So the answer to this problem has to be 10 then out of all of 143. So the answer is 10 out of 143. And there you have it. Okay? However, having said that, some people might prefer to go back to using the conditional probability formula, which you'll often see in formula books and books of tables, statistical tables. It goes something like this. You'll be given, say, the probability of A given that B has occurred. And these A's and B's have got nothing to do with the A's and B's here, okay? Just the probability of A given B equals the probability of both events happening, A and B, divided by the probability of the given event, B in this case. And let's say this is a common formula, one that I've gone through in my tutorial. So if you're unsure how this works, okay, you can just look on my website in the tutorials under conditional probability and this will be explained. Okay, so we could use this here. Look, I'll show you how it works. We could say the probability of A and B and C given that A has occurred equals, now according to the formula, it's the probability that both of these events occur. So in other words, it'll be the probability of A and B and C and A occurring. Well clearly that's the same for this example as all three occurring. And it's divided by the probability of the given event, okay, which in this case is A. So I'll just put that there. So, what is the probability that all three occur? 10. 10, but out of 300. So it'd be 10 out of 300. And that's all divided by the probability of A, that the blood has substance A in. That's all of this circle, 143. 143 out of 300. If you were to multiply top and bottom by 300, you'd end up with 10 then out of 143. So you can see, obviously, we get the same answer. This method, though, is a lot longer. I would only use this type of method if I was doing, say, a tree diagram problem. But when I've got Venn diagram problems, you can just spot this straight away. OK, well, finally, the last part, part D. We're asked, what's the probability of having a universal blood donor? Okay, that's one that hasn't got any of the substances in. Well, I'll just write an intro here, first of all. Probability of a universal blood donor. So how many people haven't got substance A, B or C in their blood? Well, clearly it's this 20 out here. So it's got to be 20 then out of the 300. And if you reduce this down, you'll find that you'll get 1 15th. Alright? So, hope that gives you some idea now then of how to tackle the parts in this question.